All right, let's get started. We are going to go over chapter three today. We may even get into chapter four. We'll see how the timing is. All right, and um, we're also, I'm, not, I'm still not sure exactly what happened yesterday with, with my machine, but it appears to be, everything appears to be good now. What I would like all of you to do right now, we're, we're actually gonna start on this, okay? And don't don't worry about it. It's not going to look exactly like this, of course. You know, it probably won't look as professional, etc. We're not going to have everything that they have in here, but we're going to build it as the semester goes on. Does that make sense to people? So, I mean, don't look at it now, you know, when we look at the first pass of this and go, oh my God, this just really stinks. You know what? Because it will. But as you add, you know, as your experience and your knowledge grows, Okay, we'll add more to it and it'll look more professional. All right, hopefully that makes some sense. So we're going to do it this way. In the order in which we do this, I'm going to do the Git stuff first, then the GitHub. It doesn't matter. We could do the GitHub stuff first and then the Git. It really and truly doesn't matter. But what I'd like everyone to do, am I right in expecting that now, I know that, that some people have had problems with it, Am I right in assuming that everyone has both Git and GitHub on their system? Okay, so if you would, as we did the other day, please go over to your desktop, right mouse click on your desktop, choose new and choose folder. So right mouse click on your desktop, choose new and choose folder. Now, I'm going to tell you something, and this this is like, uh, for lack of better words, a generalization. When you are creating stuff for this program, if you're creating, you know, if you're naming a file, if you're naming a folder, etc., get used to not putting blank spaces in words. Just get used to doing it because it can cause problems with different things. URLs typically will put like, for example, they'll put like a percent sign 20 or something like that in for blank, for blank, you know, spaces. But why make the system do more work than it has to? So instead of calling this new folder, I'm going to call this all lowercase letters. I'm going to run it together. I'm going to call this Travis Trent. So T-R-A-V-I-S-T-R-I-T-T. -T -T. Now, sometimes what you see when people are naming things like this, they use either hyphens between words or underscores between words. All right. With some packages, that's totally fine to use one or the other and occasionally even both. But just because we don't want to run into any problems whatsoever, we're just going to do it like this. All right. Now, then I'd like you to double click on this, if you would, please. And we're just going to set up a structure very similarly to what we set up the other day. Now, we could go and we could open this up in code and do it pretty much like we did it yesterday. And it's not a problem. It wouldn't be hard at all to do. All right. But we're going to do it a little bit more, you know, just sh to show you another way. So what I want you to do is underneath this Travis trip, we're going to first create three folders. The order in which you create these does not matter. The first one will be called CSS. The second one will be called images. And the third one will be called JS. All right. So we now have three folders. So what we're doing is we're setting up our initial folder structure. All right. OK. We're going to do two or three more things. And then we're going to move over. We're going to start Git. And then we'll get, you know, we'll get over to the GitHub side too. But we want to have a file that we can start with, an index.html file. We could open up code and we could do it in there, and there'd be absolutely no problem doing it that way. But just so you see this, now don't be in any of these folders. So I'm still at the Travis Tritt level right here. Can everybody see where I am? So don't don't go into CSS, don't go into images, don't go into JS. But from right here, take your mouse and put it into a blank area down here, right mouse click, and choose new, but not folder. Down near the bottom, choose text document. All right? 
and it's going to create a file that's called new text document dot text well we want to highlight this whole thing not just the new text document but also the dot text so the whole thing is in blue like this and we're going to type in index.html when you hit enter your terminal bell is going to ring because it's going to tell you it's going to alert you to the fact that hey you're about to change the extension of a file just so you know you're doing that there's nothing wrong with doing it the system in its own way is just trying to warn you that indeed that's what you are doing that is what we want to do so I'm going to hit enter here and you hopefully you heard that you'll probably hear it on yours but it says if you change a file extension the name might become unstable are you sure you want to change it now I'm doing it like this on purpose and the reason for this is occasionally what you'll do is you'll say oh somehow that got goofed up and I've got an image file and it's supposed to have been changed from dot uh, to a, it was a ping file don't worry about pings we're gonna start talking about them today but somehow accidentally instead of being saved as dot PNG it was saved as dot PN that's wrong the system won't know how to open it so you'll want to go in there and change it that's a time when that's a good thing you wouldn't want to do it the other way in other words you wouldn't want to take a dot PNG file and change it to a dot PN file okay so yes this is what I want to do so I'm clicking OK now I've got that file there is absolutely nothing in it there is absolutely nothing in that file all right so the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my CSS folder I'm going to double click on the CSS folder and I'm going to do basically the same thing that I just did in that I'm going to right mouse click on here choose new choose text document but I'm going to change this one and I'm going to call this styles.css and when I hit enter again the terminal bell is going to ring <clears throat> and again it's going to warn me that I'm changing the extension I want to do that so I hit enter I get that yes I want to do that all right so I now have two files that I've created although both files are currently empty the first file is my index.html file which we're going to use for our home page and index.html if you don't know this by default which means unless told otherwise you don't have to write this down but um, if I go out to a website what happens is by by default it's going to go in and it's going to look it's going to literally look for a file that's called index.html it's going to look for that file so in other words if I go out typically if I, for example if I go out to HTTPS colon slash slash rankin.edu and I hit enter it's looking for the index.html file out there if it doesn't find that file back in the olden days like in the 90s all right uh, for a long time and, and really more before that when you had a file extension like this it could only be three characters long the reason I'm telling you that is many people when they create .html files call them .htm files they are the same thing the the newest convention is to put in .html some people I know Mr. Gudmiston for example still uses .htm which is totally fine but what the reason I'm telling you that is if I go out to here and it doesn't find index.html the next thing it looks for is index.htm all right if it doesn't find that so it looks for this first then it looks for this and if it doesn't find that it then looks for a file called default.html and if it doesn't find that it looks for a file called default.htm there are other things it may look for usually you know you, you get to a certain point where I mean if you put in instead of ranking if I spelled it wrong and unless there was a ran a ran in dot edu I get an error message all right but that's that's something different that's just because I put in a bad domain name 
All right, but I'm, what I'm just trying to get across to you is how the system is looking for things. All right. Now, you may or may not realize this, but yesterday when we did that practice exercise, when we did that practice exercise yesterday, and you brought it up on the screen, and, and before we put any CSS in there whatsoever, you may realize this, you may not. There was already CSS on that file. And what I mean by that is the browser automatically sets up some default CSS on any file that it renders. So even if you don't have any, it's going to put some in there. Why does it do that? Because it, you know, in the off chance that there's no CSS, it doesn't want everything crunched up into the upper left-hand corner, for example. All right? Guess what? That's what we're going to do, is we're going to crunch it all up into the upper left-hand corner. Why? So when we put in our CSS, we have total control over where everything is. All right? Now, you don't have to go here yet, but I want to show you two things. All right? So I'd rather have you watch, because you'll have plenty of time to do this. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go out, I'm going to type in Eric Meyer CSS Reset. All right, because this, this isn't the one that we're going to use, okay? A long time ago, and this is even probably before Angie's time, I, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know how old you are. I don't care. But the, the point is, with, you know, there, there was a guy that uh, had a, a TV show on Saturdays called American Bandstand. All right, his name was Dick Clark. He's not with us anymore. All right, and... He was always known as the father of rock and roll. And somebody asked him once, are you really the father of rock and roll? And he said, I'm not the father of rock and roll, but I like to think of when father, when rock and roll was born, I helped assist in the delivery. All right. The reason I'm telling you that is that's kind of what Eric Myers is to CSS. He's a guy who's, who's very much been at the forefront. He has books on CSS. He's known as a CSS guru. All right. So, Take a look at what we have here. I don't expect you to understand most of this, but it's saying all of these different tags, HTML tag, a body tag, a div span, a span tag, etc. all these. I'm not going to, of course, read them all out to you. It says we want absolutely no margin. We want no padding. We want no border. We want the font size to be basically the default font size and inherit the default font and basically just set it up. All right. And then he says, OK, and if you're doing HTML5 stuff, if you're using an older browser, an older browser may not recognize HTML5 stuff. So don't let it break. So if you come into one of these tags that you don't understand, just use it like this. And we're going to get into what all that stuff is. All right. The body should have a line height of 100%. All right. It says... There should be no list styles for organized list, or ordered list, or unordered list. The block quotes, there's some other stuff. All right? So the point is, what we could do is we, we could come in here and we could click on this. And if you look, there it is. We could just go highlight all of it, throw it into a blank file, call it CSS reset or something like that, and include it. That would be totally fine. In fact, I've done that with classes in years past. The reason, and I'm telling you that, the reason we're not going to use that is, and this you can look at, I'm going to go out to what is it? normalize CSS, because that's what our book uses. All right? So it says normalize.css, make browsers render all elements, et cetera, et cetera. Okay? So, it's a modern CSS alternative to CSS resets, okay? It makes browsers render all elements more consistently and in line with modern standards. It targets only styles that need normalizing. Now, if we looked hard enough in here, I might have to click this link or a different link. I don't know. We could actually find the code. Okay, we could get it. It's not as long, I believe, as Eric Meyer's reset, but it does virtually the same thing. All right, we're going to get to it in our book as well. 
But for now, I'm going to click where it says download V8.0.1. And notice it didn't do a download. It's giving me this file. All right. And it brought it up in my text editor, my default editor, which is Notepad. I'd like you to do the same thing. I don't know if yours will come up in Notepad. I don't know. But what did I do again? I went over to this. I typed in here, normalize space CSS. I think you can probably do dot CSS also. And I chose the first one. The first link that was there, which is Nicolas. I believe he's the person who, who invented it. Dot GitHub dot IO, and it's got some stuff for normalize. Can everybody find that? All right. And so everybody's found it, and everybody has clicked, gone down about halfway and clicked the download button. Correct? All right. And again, it should bring it up in some kind of editor. I don't know what editor. I don't really care. But let's see if from right here, let's see if we can do a couple things. All right. All right. So I'm going to right mouse click on this. Literally, I'm right mouse clicking in a blank spot on the file. And one of the things that comes up when I do that is save as. Do you all see a save as when you right mouse click? Is there anyone that does not see a save as? That's good. So I'm going to choose save as. And hopefully you notice on here it says normalize.css. Now, it's not smart enough to know that we want it to go into the Travis Tritt CSS folder, so we're going to put it in there. So we're going to double-click on the Travis Tritt folder we just created, and we're going to double-click on the CSS folder we just created. We've already got in there right now styles.css, and now we're going to click Save to add into that normalize.css. Now, you don't have to look, but please listen, because this is the most important thing out of what I've told you so far. We're going to have to list and link to both those files in our HTML file. Did what I just say make sense to you? The order is unbelievably important. You must put the normalized one first, followed by our style.css. Because if you put the style.css first and follow it by the normalize.css, it's probably going to overwrite a lot of the things you put in style. All right? So you want to put the most generic ones first. So we will do that in just a couple minutes. But for lack of better words, and you can close this now, but for lack of better words, okay, to my, to my knowledge in here, what everybody should have right now is you've got three folders, a CSS folder, an images folder, and a JS folder. The images folder should be empty. The JS folder should be empty. You've got a blank index dot. Yes, sir. Is anybody in here drawing a Honda SUV? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. That's nice they do that kind of stuff in case somebody put, left their lights on or whatever. So. All right. We've got a blank index.html file. And inside of our CSS, we have two files. You'll notice that the normalized file is not empty. If we look over here, it's 6K in length. So it's not empty. But our styles.css that we've created is empty. Does all that make sense? If I said or done anything that doesn't make sense to anyone. All right. Then I want to make I want you to make sure you're right at Travis Tritt. Right there. So we're right there. Make sure that up here it says Travis Tritt. Don't be in CSS. Don't be in images, don't be in JS, and don't have anything open as far as, you know, any of these files. If you got them open, it wouldn't hurt anything, but if you do have something open, just close it. All right? So we're going to start our Git stuff right now, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to do this. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to right mouse click on an empty area in the folder, and we're going to choose Git Bash here. And again, if I'm going through this too fast, if it's too slow, sorry, but if I'm going through it too fast, 
you got to stop me. If something isn't working on your machine, all right? So I'm choosing Git Bash here. You may or may not know this. You can resize this, all right? Also, if you, if you know, if you hold down on the control key and you use your mouse wheel, that's right here, the wheel. So if you control and you use the mouse wheel, you can make the font bigger. All right, so if you have old eyes like I do, all right, that makes it a lot easier to see. Now, right now, you don't have to do this. I'm going to put in a command, and I'm going to get an error message. I'm purposely putting in a command to get an error message. I'm putting in git status. That says, what's the status of my git? And it says fatal because I haven't done anything with git yet. All right, you typically don't do a git status until you've done a git init. So I'm going to keep clearing the screen after virtually every command I put in here. So the first thing I'm going to do here, and please look up on the screen, because you'll have time to do it, but I want you to see this. Oops, not there. I'm going to type in here right now, git space init. You can do the same, but notice what changes as soon as I put in git space init and I hit enter. All right, now I've got that dot git file, or folder, I should say. And I mentioned this to you yesterday. I'm saying it again today. Don't, if you can help it, don't even go look in that file. That's a file that's managed by Git itself. It's going to track all of your changes and the like. All right, I've had people say that to me. I just want to see what it looked like. I guess I changed something and now nothing works. And if that's the case, you may have broken the link that, that, that Git has between your project and Git. All right? But I wanted to show it to you because I wanted you to see that something has already happened. Now, if I go back, I'm going to clear the screen again. And let me move this up. Now, if I say, as I did before, Git status, now you'll notice how it's changed. All right? And what do I mean? It's showing me in here all the stuff that that I haven't done yet all right remember what happens is you come in once you start working with git you come in you do a git init to begin all right after you do that you can you know you got files that are ready you can do a git status now before you can commit these files you have to do what's called stage these files. So that's an intermediate step. All right? And we could, if we only, for example, if all we wanted to add here was index.html, we could do that. We want to add everything that's in here. And the shortcut for doing that, and you can all do this, is git space add space dot. Dot means that everything, that all these files are untracked. But if we had a file, if we'd already done this, and let, let's say we'd already done this, okay? So we not, and, and then we added a new file. So let's just pretend we added a new file. It would show in here. But let's also pretend that we added some code to our index.html file. We, these are untracked files, meaning that nothing has happened with them yet. But up here, if we'd made changes, it would say modified files. Does that make sense? All right. If we want to add everything that's been changed, the easiest way to do that is a git space add space period. But you can add files incrementally. You can add them one at a time. I could have said here uh, CSS slash normalize.css and then hit the space bar, CSS slash styles.css and hit the space bar index.html and hit enter and that would do the same thing as this you know again I, I have never heard of a person in their life in my life that's you know I heard a couple of you say oh why you why are you why are you in this field I, I'd be really amazed if one is because I really like the type all right that wouldn't make a lot of sense to me all right so if I can take a command and put it in in seven or eight characters as opposed to 20 or 30, I'll take that command. So git space, add space, period. Okay? Now, notice I got a thing in here. This is one of those things I mentioned to you the other day. 
It's saying that line feeds are going to be replaced by carriage return line feeds. The big thing about that is LF by itself is more a Unix or a Linux thing. And these commands that we're running are more Unix or Linux commands. But we're using a Windows machine. And it's saying for Windows to be basically be able to understand what we're doing, it's going to convert those LFs to CRLFs. Do we care? Not a bit. But occasionally, you might get literally 20 or 30 of these things, just so you know, depending on what it is you're doing. It doesn't hurt anything. All right? Now, if I go back again, and I again type in git status, notice now it tells me I've got nothing to commit. However, I'm sorry, I've got nothing to stage. However, these files are now ready to be committed. Does all that make sense? So again, the process is when you start, you do a git init. That creates the .git folder for you. Once you have made some changes to your program, etc., all right, you did like we just did. You do a git, you can do a git status, but then you do a git space add space period. That shows basically every the git status shows you everything that's ready to be committed. If you've got things to commit, git space add space period. That adds them to the staging area. Now we're ready to commit these. And again, and don't worry about typing in. I'm not going to hit enter, but I'd rather have you look up here because it's it's git space commit space and you are supposed to put a message in there dash m all right you can either use single quotes or double quotes here all right there are a couple windows programs just so you know that actually require you when you use git to use double quotes so i typically use double quotes but single quotes work just fine I'm going to say in here, not initial commit, but I'm going to say here in double quotes, initial project setup. Because that's what we did. All right. We didn't really add any code other than that normalize.css file because the other two files that you see here, the styles.css and the index.html, they're both empty. You could put initial commit in here. It doesn't hurt. The point is... In fact, what a lot of people will do, too, is they'll put something like this. And you can do this, but you don't have to. They'll put in, for example, commit number one or something like that. They come up with their own way of doing this. You may go to work for a company that has its own protocol for doing it. They may have a certain way that they do commits. All right. When I, when I got, when I finished basically when I was in my early 20s and, and I got out after going in for my two-year degree in IT, all right, and I got hired, I went in, I got a job as a programmer back at the time when it was AT&T Bell Laboratories and I was a programmer. And a guy came and he gave me a book that was like this. And I said, what is this? And he said, these are our standards. It's our SOP, our Standard Operating Procedure Manual. And he put it down and he goes, just look through it when you get time. And so I'm being, being the smart ass I can sometimes be, I said, well, that's all? And he goes, no, there's five volumes. This is volume one. It's basically got the stuff that you'll need to know. All right. all, the only reason I'm telling you that is sometimes you go into a place and you're given a lot of free reign. If you go into a company and you're the only web developer there, there may be no one there that talks to you about protocol or anything, you're making it up as you're going. The bigger the company, the better the chance they're going to have a lot of things in place, some of which you might not be real happy with, but that's the way it is. So, git space commit space minus m, the m means message, all right, and initial project setup. I'm going to hit enter now, and it tells me what I've done. Okay, it says three files have changed. It shows you what they are. It says 349 insertions. I'm not even sure what that is. It probably has something to do with what's in the normalize.css file. It might be the number of characters in there. It might be something else. I don't know. Not to be funny, I don't care. All right? But it, it's totally fine. All right. Now, 
The next thing that we're going to do then, what I want you to do is get out to your, go, go back to github.com. And when I showed you my github.com yesterday, mine, let's see. Mine sort of look like this. All right, but I wanted to come in and create a new repository. Now, with yours, I've already guessed I've gone a step ahead, and it's not letting me go back a step. I don't know why, but it should. I'm the same kind of thing that happened yesterday. So let me get out and try to get back in again. Because I went in the when I was when I was in the other class yesterday in the afternoon class, everything worked like a charm. All right. If for some reason I have a problem here, as long as you don't, that's what matters to me. If I'm going to come in and have all sorts of problems, then I'm going to have all sorts of problems. But I want stuff to work for you. All right. Do you have on yours, I think I asked this yesterday too, a plus sign up here? Okay, I'm hearing one no. Anybody else with a no? All right, I'm going to come in here and uh, where it says github.com, I'm going to change this to my login, JPS Rankin, and see if that changes anything. Okay, well, that, that wasn't good. Didn't like that. It's just like I said, this is really weird. It's done now two straight days. Yesterday afternoon, machine was off for a while. Well, I wasn't on GitHub, but I got back on. Mine had the plus sign right here. Everything cool. Looked exactly the way it should look. All right, so show more. I don't want to really show more. No. Let's see. Okay. There you go. Thank you. There. Maybe uh, yours is the same. Okay. Good. Thank you. All right. I'm never I'm never too proud to take help. So if you think that I screwed up someplace, please tell me. All right. So click your plus sign. Choose new repository. You get the gold star for today. Now I have to make sure I give it to the right Gabe right now. All right. Okay. So it says it should you should have something that looks like this. Correct? This should be should be the exact same name as the folder that we did. So I'm going to write Travis Tritt. If you put Travis underscore Tritt or Travis hyphen Tritt or whatever, that's what you should use. This, I think, if you put in, if, if you didn't listen to me and you saved your folder as Travis space Tritt, I think it'll automatically put in either a hyphen or an underscore in here for you. But again, it's just not considered good practice to do that. So I'm going to type in here Travis Tritt. Notice it says Travis Tritt is available. Now, where it says that, that this Travis Tritt is available, that means that it's available under my particular GitHub account. All right. If I had tried practice 01 like we used yesterday, it would have given me an error message and said that that particular repository is already being used. All right. There are ways, and what we will look at it, not today though, but when you are on the Get Home homepage, there's, there are settings and stuff, and you can go in there. If you've got a repository you don't want anymore, you can get rid of it. You can rename repositories. There's a lot of stuff that you can do. Now, what we did yesterday was we put in a description, all right, we didn't do anything else in here. And I was doing some reading yesterday, and what they actually recommend is that when you first create a repository like this, don't fill in anything. Because you can always go back into GitHub and add that information later. All right? So all I'm going to do is I've got here Travis Tritt. All right, I'm not going to put in a description. Keep it public. We're not going to add a git ignore. I did mention the git ignore yesterday. Git ignore are files that the system doesn't need in order to do its job. And typically, not only are, are they files the system doesn't need, but by adding them, it makes your project bigger and you can eventually get what's called project bloat. In other words, you've got files you don't need that are just wasting space. 
All right, we don't have any of those. We're not, we're not going to even worry about a license. It's totally going to be fine. All right, so just click Create Repository. Now, after you did that, I'm asking the question. Everybody, please look at the screen. Did you all get a URL like this? It should be https colon slash slash github.com, your username slash travistrit.git, something along those lines. I'd like you to take that right there and either click here, because that'll copy it, or just highlight all of it and do a control C to copy. We're going to need that. That's what I didn't give you yesterday. My bad, as they say. All right, we're going to fix this. We're going to go back into Git. And as soon as we go back into Git, we're going to push that up here. Then we're going to come back and you're going to see it's here. All right, we'll do that in the next five minutes. And it won't even take that long. Has everybody copied the URL that you have there? All right. Then go back to your project, please. All right, so back to here is fine all right and I'm going to show you the commands don't worry about copying them in or putting them in yesterday we did this we loaded git and we put in that right then we went in and we did this git config and I said it's a one-time shot basically where we set up our username and we set up our email if you had to go back and re reinstall git please put in those commands right now all right I'll leave them up there for a second so if you had any kind of problems yesterday then please put that in and again replace my name with yours replace my email with your ranking email all right everybody's there okay now what we want to do then I'm gonna make this smaller so you can all see it all right I'm going to I'm going to hit enter a few times in between each of these and I want to explain them all. Don't worry about copying it in, please. But I want because I want you to take a look at what's on the screen. All right. Right now, you may or may not remember this from when we watched that video the other day. But when we pushed it, we said git space push space origin space master. Okay? The problem is right now we don't have an origin. That was why mine didn't work yesterday, because I left a command out. So what you can type in from this line right here, that line, you know, and I'm going to clear this. Try, you know, so you want to type in git space, remote space, add space, origin space, then in single quotes, you want to paste in that URL that's yours, not mine. Now, you're all typing, fine. You may want to do it in Notepad or, or whatever so you don't screw it up. You don't have to. If you're like, no, I'm cool with my typing, great. So it's Git space, remote space, add space, origin space, then in single quotes, Put in that thing that you got from where? From right there. All right? Not mine, but put in yours. Oops. I'll leave that up there for just a second. And give me a second. I'm just going to grab it and copy it because I want to put it into mine in just a second. If you try doing that and you get an error message or something looks really weird, Raise your hand. Pardon me? Okay, what you what you can do is just put in your address bar here. Uh, we want to highlight the whole thing. Or copy that. For some reason that doesn't work on the net. Okay, let me show you. Make sure you put it in single quotes. So this is creating our origin. 
So the system knows basically where to start from, however you want to look at it. All right. Questions? So again, I grab that also, I believe, and I'm going back here, and I'm going to paste that in. Hit enter. Nothing magical happened, did it? And probably on yours, the same thing happened. Now, the next command that's here, just so you know, this next command, it's optional. This basically is going to check to see whether or not it worked. Get space, remote space, minus V. And I'll put it back in a second, but I want you to look on mine. And it's telling us where we're, what we're using. And that's good. Yesterday is where I got the errors because we didn't put in this command. All right. Now what we've done is we've associated our Git project with our GitHub repository. Does that make sense to all of you? All right. Now we can go, should work, and we can put in this command. Git space, push space, origin space, master, and hit enter. I know you've all heard this saying before. It's a marathon, not a sprint. So don't see how fast you can do this stuff. Because stupidly, that's what I did yesterday, and I forgot one of the basic commands. All right. I'm going to put that in on mind. Hit enter. As your projects get more and more complex, and as you get more and more code in them, this will take a little longer, and it might take up a full screen. If you've got page after page and all sorts of stuff in there, this wasn't bad, though, at least in my humble opinion, it wasn't bad. So now, if you look up on the screen, please, I'm going back to here. So go back to your GitHub page. Don't worry about anything. You don't have to copy anything, but look on the screen, please. Hit the button right there, right next to the house. This button right here, that's your reload button. And what you should see is this. Anybody who doesn't see that? And that's fantastic. I'm serious. You should, okay. You should all be proud of yourself, though, because what you did we, was you successfully set up a GitHub repository, you set up a project, okay, you added Git to the project, you linked the, pro the project to the repository, and you pushed. That was a push. If now, if, if we lost, let's just say that I lost what's on my folder, on the desktop. I just lost it. Instead of doing a push, I could do a pull and tell the system to go out to the cloud here where my GitHub account is and bring all that stuff back. So you are now at least protected from what you've done thus far. Right? A couple people had problems, so we're going to get, we're going to, See what we can, can do to get those fixed. It says login failed. Use control C to cancel basic credential prompt. Right. Go ahead, give it that. But everything worked until then, correct? Yeah. Just to ask for the name for GitHub. Did you, did you put in that command that we had put in earlier? In other words, this thing. Uh, did you put in these two lines? Yes. All right. Just for the heck of it, just try typing them in again, okay? Because it looks like it doesn't understand the association between... It's two binary signs, not one. So. You know, I don't know 
once you fill it out, it doesn't have yeah. enough spray and right there. And okay. Well, occasionally when you do some of this stuff too, you know, as, as far as what you ask you to, it'll ask you to, for a password. Some of the stuff that you do in here. It might ask you to totally log in again. You know, and people say to me, well, geez, why does it do that? And, and not trying to sound like a smart aleck, but I don't work for Git. So I can't tell you why they do some of the stuff that they do. All right? And I can't tell you why certain times you've got to do this, and other times you don't have to do that. I, because I don't know. All right? And to say, well, because that's the way it is, that sounds like that, that's a stupid answer. But that's the best one I can give you. No, why it why it does sometimes, and other times you can do the same or almost, maybe the same action or something similar, and it doesn't ask you for anything. And like I said, I don't know why it does that. Now you put it in your inside ranking. Yeah. Okay. Good. All right. Uh, let's see. Well, you're up here. Now it asked him to log in. Uh, probably most of the rest of you didn't ask you to log in. Okay. So maybe maybe it's just a game thing. I don't know. That's why, like I said, when you set this up, please make sure you remember your login and your password. All right. That that said, that doesn't mean do password. You make your password the word password. You don't want to do that because if somebody figures out your password, literally they could put stuff out on your GitHub account. They're they're virtually you. All right, and they can remove things you've got out there too, and that could be catastrophic if you're looking for a job or doing whatever. Question. I got it. Thank you. Okay, uh, and, and I'll, I'll show that to you in a minute because okay. because you've got a setting turned off we'll okay. do during the break. Sure. Okay, then that means that when we first created this, this file right here, is that, is that the one you're talking about? Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, Right now, that file, believe it or not, is called index.html.cat. So do this. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, all right. Can you go to Visual Studio? Go on Visual Studio, open up that folder. And from there, you can change it to, uh, you'll read it. And it will actually have this whole file extension. And have like. It, right now, it's called. Yeah. It's called that. That's what the problem is. So open. That's the wrong one. Right now, you're on the practice. So file? No, you, yeah, you want to be in the trying to folder or open folder. Grab it. Trying to grab it. Yeah, open folder. Now, if you wanted to try something, you could go back and you can go through all the steps again. You don't have to do it now. We'll go through later. But you could go back and you could do another git add dot, you can, and you could do another git commit, and then you could do another push, and then you just go through all this. Okay. Did you did you put in those two commands? Don't want to say the ones that are in the air right now. Put them in again. Because when we get them over here, the radio better work well. So we're changing.
just finishing up over here. I'm, again, am I right in assuming everybody else here is work? Because again, if it didn't, I, I appreciate being asked. Stuff is going to happen as we go through it. And you know, stuff might happen where everything's been going fine, all of a sudden, hey, this doesn't work anymore. Okay? If I can help you fix it, I'll do the best I can to do that. So you can do another git space add space dot and then do another git space commit space minus m, give it a different message, hit enter, and then do another git space push origin. That's the one you want to put in the I think it's around the other. Yeah. That could be what it was. Yeah. You did it like that the first time that you put in the non existing address. I don't know what it was. Now, you're working off OneDrive. I don't typically work off OneDrive. Uh, it, it could be a OneDrive thing. I don't know. Is, is this a, that's it like that? A, a, that is right on your desktop, is that correct? So where does OneDrive fit into this? I don't know. Okay, well, if it's, that's what I'm finding. So it must be that your path is, is going to one drive. I don't know if that's the problem or not. This is what I want you to do. Save that. Just to save that file. I save it. Save the file. But save what you've got now. Just call it. Into the and I'm going to walk you into the minute to go into your, your, your um, email for uh, the website and email me back and I'll take a look at the Because mm -hmm. I haven't seen that. His is failing, but he's, it looks like he's got a thing, he's using OneDrive, and it, look, it looks like he's getting over some kind of OneDrive error. So I'm gonna look, look at that when we, when we go to break. I haven't seen that error before is what I'm saying. All right, it is nine o'clock, so let's take a break and let's come back please at 10 after nine, okay?